On this episode of The Briefing Room, we are after action reviewing Practical Urban Carbine. Hey guys, my name is Dave Tim. Thank you very much for checking out this video. I'm very privileged to have Steve Fisher from Sentinel Concepts join us for this video. Steve, thank you very much. Dude, it's a pleasure being back up in Minnesota with you. We absolutely love it. Absolutely awesome. We absolutely love it. Now, we just wrapped up Practical Urban Carbine that was instructed by Steve for three days. Uh, we were the host here in the lovely Brainerd area <laughs> of Minnesota. And I gotta say, we had amazing weather. Ugh, that worked out. People yeah. always wanna know about weather conditions, but it, it, was, it was just hot. 80s and hot and yeah. sunny, man, for it was fall, great. It was great. And uh, it was really cool about our range is we were finally able to utilize more of the distance that yeah. we have available. So we shot out to 300 yards and we shot mostly with barricades. And before we get into the meat and potatoes of the course for the AAR, I just wanted to get a little bit of background about how the course development came to be. The, the, the course kind of came about, I think, out of necessity. Uh, I started to see a lot of dudes that were coming into classes that were 25-yard carbine shooters, yeah. which th that's great, flat range drills, home defense stuff, up drills all the time. That, that's fine when we're starting to learn things, but understand it's a carbine, it's a, a pseudo rifle. You know, mm -hmm. It's capable of great distance, even out to 600 plus yards. Guys were losing the fundamentals of marksmanship, basics of understanding true zeros, truing their gun, setting their guns up for maximum point blank range success. I mean, you never know, especially law enforcement capacity, uh, even the you know good earth walker who has a gun you know for defense those shots can come at any point any place and time and at any distance yeah. so i started to look at it more and more and tell myself you know what and after seeing some guys who just even couldn't get zeros or really hard on the gun at 100 yards i was like man this this needs to come back and dudes need to become riflemen again based on what this yeah. country was built off of yeah. so that was important and that's kind of where it came from cool and in my reality you know law enforcement in a rural area yeah. i mean we have a, a city-ish you know I don't want to call it urban, but a small town USA sure. is really where I work. And we have some rural areas and, you know, finding distances is not hard. You yeah. know, big shopping malls, big schools, big churches, mm -hmm. parking lots, neighbor driveway, you know, Farmer John or whatever yeah. it might be. Those distances are a reality for me. So that's why I was really interested in having you back for this course with that distance emphasis. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had a great group of students. Just solid core. Yeah, 12. 12 shooters, including yeah. the hosts, and guns, you know, mostly AR 5.56 guns. Mm -hmm. However, we had uh, Andy and I were running yes. our AR 308s. He had an LMT item in Midwest Industries, mm -hmm. and then we also had a SCAR Heavy. Yeah. Uh, he actually had two SCAR Heavy, the two twins. Two SCAR Heavies, yeah, he yeah, had the one twins. One is none, two is one. My yeah. SCAR Heavy. Yeah. So we, we had a lot of the heavy caliber, plus I had my Midwest 308 as well with me in the back yeah. too. So we had, we had a lot of heavy guns in the class, which was great to see too. Yeah, so we had a, a wide variety and pretty much uh, everybody except for a couple were running low power variable optics. Mm -hmm. We had Trigicon, we had Vortex, uh, we had Swarovski, Collis, Vcog, uh, Vcogs from Trigicon. Yeah. Uh, I didn't see any loopholes. Nope. I didn't see any loopholes, which is surprising. You usually see at least one loophole in the class, but it wasn't. Um, a um, lot of night dots. force, a lot of night force, a couple yep. of, you know, the typical aim points showed up, and that was great. Uh, we had one of the uh, SIG optics mm -hmm. and a Strike Eagle. Yeah. And the Strike Eagle did end up having some issues holding adjustments. So that did. went down, that was swapped out during class, which was unfortunate. But, happens. you know, sometimes that's why you go to training is to wash out your gear. And, you know, one thing to note on optics is I was running an evaluation sample of the Trigicon Accu Power 1 to 8. Yeah. And I found that overall I liked the scope a lot. I'm going to be doing a, a full review if you guys are interested in that. That'll be a separate video. But it was great to take the course with that optic because I could really kind of stretch it out a little bit yeah. and also kind of learn. You know, not just go to a range one day and shoot at some sure. paper, you know, actually get some up, down and a barricade work and kind of see where the optic is. But overall, it's a nice optic. Yeah, it is. And I know you had some input in developing that too. I, I, I gave him yeah. a little bit of stuff with it, not much at that point in the phase of it, but it is, it's a good optic. It's it's fairly robust, typical Trigicon quality in that point, you know. Uh, again, it's not for everybody. It just yeah. depends on what your needs are. Take a look through them. That's why people come to class. You know, you, get Absolutely. A, you know this class, there was probably, you know, $30,000 worth of optics here. Yeah. You, you could turn around literally and look through all the glass that was here from base and strike eagle to Swarovski and say, wow, that's great, but is it $2,000 worth of great for me and my needs? Probably not, but is this $1,300 scope good enough for me? And yeah. absolutely, and that's a good thing about coming to class. Yeah. You get to see a variety of things here. Yeah, so no real big gear issues. No. So let's get into the meat and potatoes. Yeah. Now, day one was all day with zeroing. Talking about that's effective cool. zeros, talking about the pros and cons versus the 50, 100, 200, and then a lot of time, like I said, literally all day was actually just zeroing and holds and ballistics. Yeah lecture as well as shooting out to 200 yards yeah. and then we even did some holdover at 300 towards the very end so that was a, a long 
slow paced day, <laughs> but I think it's important for the students to get that data of knowing a getting to hit at those distances consistently and then making adjustments and seeing what the round does actually, you know, is impacting where they're holding. So I think that was a good day. It was a slower pace, but I think a lot of knowledge was gained. It is. It's a, it's a necessity. It's kind of the evil of the course. You need to have that information. You need to develop that data. Uh, the thing that usually hinders guys when they come to class like this ammo selection. Sure. We, we saw that, um, yep. you know, a lot of it becomes, hey, we have XYZ ammo, I understand budgets, I understand money, home life, and get that, you get what you get when you can get it and you use it, and that's great. Uh, ammo will hinder your performance at 100, 200, 300 yards, especially when shooting for accuracy groups at those distances. Yeah. The guns are quite capable of it, the optics are quite capable of it, you know, the shooters are generally really capable of it, they just haven't realized it yet, but the ammo is the key ingredient in that recipe yeah. a lot of times, and, and that's the hard thing, you know, spending a couple bucks on some extra quality ammo yeah. is well worth the frustration, because by the time you shoot the same amount of ammo or even more in a lesser grade ammo and the frustration it sets in yeah you would have been better off just going to the quality ammo right out of the gate which some guys did that night after class they went out and they bought some quality match ammo from one of the local stores and they came back and they're like wow night and day difference and it would have saved yeah. them a lot of frustration on day one well even finding the right quality ammo yes like i started out with gold metal match mm -hmm. and then i switched to an amax bullet mm -hmm. uh, for day two and i found that the groups were better with that my gun like the amax yep. better than the 168 gold metal uh, rifle twist barrel lengths yeah. all play an important role in this and understand that while it's not a precision base course for quote unquote you know precision rifle shooting the guns are well more than capable of it today especially yeah. with the quality of guns that are out there so the ammo and the optic really play but the ammo is really the bread and butter of it yeah. don't skimp on ammo and then the other thing that i personally was really glad i made the investment in is a good quality trigger yes and i know a lot of other students uh, talked about having a crappy trigger or talked about hey i'm really glad i have my geisley or hyperfire sure. or i think uh, I don't think there was a Luru in this class. I'm getting that mixed up from another class, but Geisley's Hyperfires and then some Mil-Spec, mm -hmm. you know, and it definitely makes a difference of having a good quality trigger. So Big difference. Don't be afraid to invest in a good trigger. Yeah. You literally get your money back every time you press it. Uh, uh, oh, absolutely. Every time you press that trigger, it's well worth that extra yeah. money you spent. And here's the thing. It doesn't have to be a $300 trigger. It can be some of the, you know, the Geisley LGs or even mm -hmm. the LaRue trigger or the BCM triggers that are set up now with the coatings on them. Uh, as long as they're smooth. Yeah and not gritty, super creepy, that's all you need. It doesn't have to be super light, anything like that. It just needs to be consistent and smooth. That's yeah. all it has to do, and have a good clean break to it, so. Yeah, so day two, we finished up uh, our zeroing and ballistic mm -hmm. section that brought us up to about midday. And then that afternoon, we started with barricade work. Yeah. And that's where really the rest of the class was all about barricades mm -hmm. and how that represents into an urban environment, using it off a vehicle or a store fixture or uh, a and corner of a podium. Yeah, anything you, know? you can find out in your world every day yeah. inside stores, inside spaces. And we've talked about those environmental spaces before being, you know, the containers and zone series that I work off of. These angles and these shapes that we use off barricades, telephone mm -hmm. poles, everything are found everywhere we go. So make use of what's available to you. And that, that was kind of the premise of the class and the more meat behind it at that point in the positional shooting with yeah. the barricades combined. Yeah, and I liked how we, you know, had, uh, you know, the shooters practice on the left side, the right side, using the wall, using the steps, mm -hmm. switching shoulders at yeah. distances, you know, for the rest of the course out to 300 yards yeah. on steel. But then the other really cool eye opener was the night portion of oh, it yeah. too. And we're fortunate we were able to get that done. And, you know, to have students see the barriers mm -hmm. that we create when shooting, i.e. the cloud, yep. definitely was a learning opportunity, plus even the comparison of lights, mm -hmm. just to see the different technology. And we had yes. one shooter on the one spectrum <laughs> Who had the, as the he Amish, called it the Amish candle? The Amish candle. Yeah, the 65. Seven lumens or whatever was the death. Yeah. <laughs> 65 lumen, old old incandescent. Yeah. And we had uh, a couple of us were running the uh, Streamlight 1000 output, mm -hmm. the ProTac. Yep. And we had uh, Scout lights, and we had kind of a mixing between of different mm -hmm. brands. And I think it was another good demonstration for students to see in real outdoors what, what the lights will do, what we can identify, and then we're shooting. It's as so, well. Yeah, with the environmental factors, mm -hmm. lights are, it's, again, like I said in class, it's kind of like a 9mm 45 debate, which is better, which is great. We yeah. all know 9mm is better, but hey, it is what it is. That's why I shoot a 10mm. <laughs> Just they because, don't make an 11. Because they don't make an 11, actually, right? So uh, the thing is this, lights are a very subjective thing to guys, depending on what they're doing. If it's a house gun, yeah, you can get away with a three, four, 500 lumen light that has a lot of spill. Sure. Uh, if you're using a carbine, what I consider to its maximum effective range of the shooter and its ability to identify things, I may want a light that has a lot more throw or a 1,000 lumen light or, you know, 1,500, 2,000 lumens, whatever's coming and whatever's out there now. Yeah. Um, so again, finding the right light for you mm -hmm. is always a good thing. And that's a beautiful thing, again, of coming to a class where you see a variety of lights. You say, oh, I was thinking about that pistol light. Tape switches were a big eye opener yeah, for guys exactly. on barricades. Light placement on the barricades is huge. Yep. Um, 
that that was a big takeaway for a lot of guys. That and seeing exactly what the lights do in that dirty air, so that we like to call it, um, the particulate that's in the air, the carbon, the gases that come off from the environmental conditions, the rounds being fired, the temperature extreme changes, uh, how it affected the suppressors, low powered variable optics, all those things come into play. And guys don't get that a lot. They go to most low light classes, they do a lot of up drills, and mm -hmm. they're happy, and there's 20 dudes on the line with white lights on white targets. You're right. So and you don't really even need a light. Yeah, right? why even turn on your light and waste the batteries, guy? Yeah. You're not learning anything out of it except, you know, manipulation of the light. So with the lights, we found that a lot of guys, you know, the switchology was important. So clicky caps versus pressure switches. Mm -hmm. Guys couldn't figure that out initially, like, oh my God, my clicky switch is really good for CQB work or in a house stand-up stuff. But once we got on barriers, I needed a tape switch to activate it with either or hand working the left and right side. Yeah, and that's what I've noticed. I've never been a traditional tape switch guy because old tape switches had limitations. Yes, they did. You know, you couldn't lock it on and in my line of work, sometimes I want the light to be on hands-free. Sure. And now we're seeing the Surefire and Streamlights offering a constant on, a pressure on. Yes. And I noticed that with the barricade. You know, for me, you know, manipulating it, I'd have to reach over, activate the button, try to get the shot. Which is time. Now having a 12 o'clock pressure pad is something I'm definitely going to revisit. So I'm glad I got that out of this course too. That's awesome. Another aspect of the low light that I really enjoyed was the demonstration of IR lasers uh -huh. and night vision. You, yes. know, you had your night vision set up with the mall mm -hmm. and thankfully we were able to capture that on our infrared camera. That was great. But it was cool to see it was pitch black for all of our naked eye. We couldn't see anything, but then all of a sudden we hear ping, ping, ping. <laughs> the we, seal's just barking and sparking. Yeah. And you guys watching this will actually be able to see that. Okay. You'll be able to see the lasers. You'll be able to see the impacts and the sparks. It actually, looked, the footage looked really cool. Oh, I saw it. That's awesome. And uh, that was an interesting, just another application of technology for yes. potential, you know, law enforcement, military, you know, yeah. applications, or if you're, you know, very well budgeted for, <laughs> for home defense, but that was a really yeah. cool demonstration. As Hold well. on, I heard glass breaking, let me get my helmet on yeah. and my goggles on. Uh, you know, we also find a lot of times now guys are using night vision more for varmint control, predator sure. hunting, stuff like that's important, but the biggest application, law enforcement, military, obviously, uh, understand these guys have been living under goggles for years. It's, it's kind of picking up even more so in the law enforcement world has been for the past 10, 15 years, but it's getting really more mainstream. Yeah. Understanding how your lasers and your lights work against photonic barriers is important. Light against light, it's all energy. You need to understand that there's a time why we stress, hey, we need a thousand lumens of light or 500 lumens of light is to defeat those transitional lighting zones. Sure. But man, the the, the, the B.E. Myers Mall and a good set of Sentinel goggles that I was running from TNVC are absolutely fantastic. They're, they're literally lifesavers and game changers yeah. and they're important to have. And it was a really cool demonstration. Yeah. And they're just cool to have. I'm not going to lie. It's just cool. So yeah, and uh, you know, the rest of it, again, was more distance barricade work, shooting out to 300 yards with the barricades transitioning from 200 to 300 yep. you know kind of having to take your pace of okay the 200 yard shot is, seems easier mm -hmm. you know by contrast and then you know transition to that 300 okay steady find your reticle find your hold you know make the, shot. the shots and that's why zeros are important in having mm -hmm. like kind of a maximum point blank range zero you know your zero is your zero mm -hmm. nothing is truly 50 200 100 300 you know 25 whatever it is right your zero is your zero distance and that's what you get um understanding where to hold immediately to deliver that shot finding that maximum point blank range for an eight inch chest circle is generally ideal for most fighting or practical carbines yeah uh, the other big thing was you know the left side barricade stuff we're working off mm -hmm. the left side shoulder it's a confidence booster yes we understand with distance and time and dependency of the type of weapons we're facing that hey i can stay on the right side of the gun, move the gun over in a position and engage the target much more exponentially, faster, great. Confidence builder though, if you can do it from the left shoulder at 300 yards dude in XYZ time, you can do it from the right side all day even faster and quicker. So again, while it's still important to know when you need to shoulder switch or cross shoulder transition and work from that offside, maximizing your coverage and the use of barriers and barricades is important but it's mainly a big confidence booster. At 300 yards, if you can hit an eight inch chest plate at that distance from the offside shoulder using a variable, you've got something going on. Yeah, and I think we definitely had a lot of skills building. Yeah. Well, Steve, again, I just wanted to thank you very much for coming out. It was a great three days of training. The, I thought the pace was good. It wasn't, you know, a go, 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 high, you know, round count up drill yeah. course, but it was more of a learning slow pace and then doing a lot of the barricade drills over and over to build that repetition, uh, repetition for skill building. I think maybe over the three days, we probably shot an average of 600 odd rounds or so right about there. Not a high intensity class by any means. Uh, some of the exercises on the barricades can get a little winding yep. as, as far as the up down momentum of it and you know yeah. constantly moving around a nine pound rifle or eight pound carbine around, uh, but that's fine. It's still part of it. It needs to be done. It needs to be understood. Yep. It was a great time being here again, the second year up here with you guys. Love it. Great host. I mean, literally no, no BS, the best host I've got across the country. Thank you. Uh, nobody puts that. out such a good spread for us or welcome, Matt. It was absolutely awesome. Well, I appreciate it.
Perfect. So more information if they want to train with you, webpage and contact info? Uh, SentinelConcepts.com. You can find me on Facebook under Sentinel Concepts, Instagram, Sentinel Concepts, all the usual social media sites, uh, but the main page is the SentinelConcepts.com. All right, guys. So check out SentinelConcepts.com. And if you're interested in training that we're hosting, LearningFirearms.com. And of course, all things guns and tactics, don't forget GunsAndTactics.com and follow us on Facebook. Subscribe, like, and share this video as well. Thank you very much again, Thanks, Steve. Sir. Appreciate it, man. It's a great time being here. Thank you guys for watching, and we look forward to seeing you in future videos. Have a great day.